Hello, hello, and welcome back for another adventure in the cookie jar. Today we're doing the second recipe for plum pudding murder. It is called hot fudge sundae cakes, which they're essentially molten lava cakes. So what you're gonna need to do is the first thing is preheating the oven to 500 degrees. Yeah, 500. <laughs> You're gonna want eight ounces of salted butter to six, eight ounces semi-sweet chocolate chips, one and a third cup, four egg yolks, five eggs, one cup of white sugar, and one cup of flour. Also vanilla ice cream. A thing with this recipe is it lists like five different ways to make this. You can use large size deep muffin cups to bake these cakes, but if your muffin pan is solid and the cups don't lift out, you'll have to remove each cake by using two soup spoons as pinchers to pry them out. Each batch will make nine cakes if you use large muffin tins. A popover pan is also a possibility, especially the kind with removable cups, but you'll have to run a knife around the inside of each cup and tip it over to remove the cake. Each batch will make six cakes in large, deep popover cups. You can also use individual souffle cups, but again, you'll have to use two soup spoons or run a knife around the inside of the dish to remove the cakes from the souffle cups. Each batch will make eight small or six large souffle dish cakes. And then it says, Hannah's trick. I found it a lot easier to use the disposable foil pot pie tins you can buy at the grocery store. I tried, I couldn't find those. With those, you can just flip them over on the dessert plate or bowl, press down on the foil bottoms with the pot holder and the cakes will flop right out. Yes, the pot pie tins are an extra expense, but moving the cakes will go much faster and the tins can be washed several times by hand or in the dishwasher before you have to throw them away. You're gonna spray, oh, grease or flour the inside of whatever you chose to use. I actually have these large cupcake tins, which I guess are the same as muffins, so I'll end up with nine of them. Um, it does say that if you don't want to deal with the greasing and the flouring, you can use the baking spray with flour in it. I always use that. I just find it so much more reliable. Um, you're going to melt the butter and the chips together, and then you're going to cool that off until you can hold it comfortably with your hands so it doesn't cook the eggs. You're going to add the whisk the yolks until they're thoroughly mixed, then slowly add them to the chocolate mixture. And then you're going to add the five whole eggs, one at a time. And then you're going to add the sugar and then the flour until it is smooth and free of plum lumps. And you're going to put that into whatever pans you decided to use. And then bake at 500 for exactly, bold and capitalized, exactly seven minutes. So set the oven timer and don't open the door. Apparently, the success of this recipe depends on high, even heat for a limited amount of time. You want to bake the outside and leave the inside filled with high, hot, molten chocolate. I am terrified that I'm going to get this wrong. I see them make lava cakes on MasterChef all the time, and they like, yeah. I mean, obviously, if I screw up, Gordon Ramsay will not be here yelling at me, but still, I don't know if I can pull this one off. <laughs> Anyway, it says to give the cakes two minutes after they come out of the oven and either upend them or use your spoons to get them out. And then uh, use two forks to pull the tops apart and expose the chocolate sauce in the center. Scoop some ice cream on there, which I guess it gives it the ice cream sundae, molten cake or cake. It says yield nine cakes in large muffin tins, six cakes in large removable popover tins, eight cakes in small souffle dishes, six cakes in large souffle dishes, or six cakes in disposable Boil pot pie pans. If you have leftover cakes, they can be reheated in the microwave, but they won't be the same. They will still be tasty, but the centers will turn into a moist cake rather than hot fudge sauce. If I want my dessert to be extra fancy, I make up some of the fruit sauce I use on potato pancakes and create little designs around the edges of large dessert plates with the hot fudge sundae cakes are baking. Mother prefers it that way. My sister likes it with her choice of ice cream. Andrea prefers chocolate. Michelle likes butter brickle, and I think it tastes best with coffee ice cream. It's coffee and chocolate, yeah. Sure. But um, be that as it may, there aren't very many ingredients to this. You're not baking it for a long period of time. I feel like it's going to go together pretty quickly. So with all that being said, let's get started. Is everything we'll be using today. 
Okay, so it has been 90 seconds, and I'm just gonna start stirring up the butter and the chocolate that we melted. We have our hands sprayed and waiting. So I could probably pop this back in the microwave for another 20 seconds, but the bowl is still really hot already. And you're supposed to wait until you can hold it to, before adding the eggs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep stirring it and hoping that the heat in the bowl will finish melting these so that I don't have to wait even longer after microwaving it for another 20 seconds. And I think I have accomplished that. I do not see any more chunks. It all seems smooth now. I can easily hold the bowl. It feels nice. It feels warm. I'm not like yanking my hands away going, ow. Um, the chocolate itself feels like a gentle heat. So I think if I add the eggs, it'll be okay. So it says to whisk the yolks until they're mixed and then slowly add them to the bowl. Which seems strange that you have to mix the egg yolks, but not the five whole eggs. Like what's the difference? Why do these have to be whisked? Just to slowly pour these in while stirring. Now we're adding the eggs one at a time. It has a very strange consistency now, almost like a eggy chocolate pudding. How else to describe the way it moves? All right don't see any more scraps of egg so I'm gonna call that good next is the sugar lastly the flour all right I do believe we are lump free so it doesn't really say how much to do in each one it just says it'll make nine so I guess I'm going to scoop them and hopefully end up in a relatively normal amount hopefully but I have no idea how much should be in each one the only other thing I really want to do is kind of try to Clean up some of this. So I have my muffins, my cupcakes, whatever you want to call them. So exactly seven minutes. Don't open the oven door. This is what we have. This is the tops and the bottoms. I just loosened the sides and flipped them out. So if I did this right, when I break this open, it should be nice and gooey inside. to make it the ice cream portion. Doesn't that look amazing? It looks really good. I am so pleased with this. That was really good. I had to stop myself from finishing all of it so I could finish the video. But it's rich and creamy. It's got a crunch from the outside of the cake. It's kind of brownish. It's, it is really, really good. And I'm just so proud of myself that I got it right. But they are an unexpected surprise. I did not think they would be so good. But next week we are working on the white chocolate 
pumpkin dreams. It is a cookie, so we are going back to cookies. No, I hope you all have a good week. I'm going to finish this cake. <laughs> Bye.